Good morning. Good morning. I'm not. I'm right a little bit behind. Sorry, but I'm getting, I'm getting it together here. How is everybody this morning? Good. Good. It is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful, cold day. Thank you, Mr. Long. Yes, it is frigid this morning almost. Everybody staying warm? Yeah, good deal. Well, it is a beautiful morning. I had a beautiful morning riding over here. Uh, coming up 35, as boring of a drive as that is, it's a straight highway all the way here. But this morning I had a very beautiful uh, yellow-orange uh, pastel sky with the sun peeking through and little jets here and there and these big, fat, slow-moving snowflakes just drifting and exploding on the highway and drifting around in these cool, eccentric waves. It was a beautiful ride over. I had a nice uh, uh, worship radio station on in the background. It was a real blessing for me. So as cold as it was in my 70-degree car and my little box, I could uh, appreciate... <laughs> Just a meager portion of God's glory this morning on the way here. So it was a pretty morning for me. I hope you had an equal blessing as well. I'm going to turn me down a little bit here. Maybe. All right. Do we have any announcements this morning? Uh, Pastor, I'll take one. I think everybody has the bulletin sees the one thing on the page that says administrative council meeting January 27th. So that's not tomorrow. That's not Martin Luther King Day. It's a week from that. You know, our uh, book of discipline for the Methodist Church describes churches having, I think, six or seven nine-man committees to do all this thing. Uh, those are for the big churches. Sometimes in a church like that, you have a concern. Is your voice heard? Uh, are your wishes known? Uh, a church our size, uh, basically, if you feel a leadership uh, part of this church and you would like to have some input, show up at this uh, meeting at 7 o'clock on the 27th, and uh, we will continue to approve things uh, in accordance with our church doctrine. So, hope to see anybody there that uh, has a leadership uh, position or would like to have one. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, those are open meetings, and we encourage the church to be involved in that. Uh, we are a, a, a one body. We hope to feel that way. We hope you feel that way. We hope to feel part of this, this family, this, this organization. So, uh, we want everybody's voice to be heard. Um, so please join us if you're, if you're able to. Yes, I just want to say, choir practice had to be set back to 7.30 for Wednesday. And uh, I'd just like to share this, this praise that goes good in my heart. This church, tired. I just feel so blessed. Um, I have been supported by the church to join a uh, national conference of handbell ringers. So we go to Louisville the first weekend of March. So I'm practicing now with Walnut Street Church because they are going as well. So I'm trying to learn a lot more to teach our wonderful bell members here. So that's why they have their practice on Wednesday evenings and that's why I get stuck our part practice until 730. I'm learning new things to bring back to the church, and I thank you for your support. We thank you for your your mission work out there, getting out there and bringing it back here. That's about it. I want to remind everybody uh, that this Saturday, this coming Saturday, we'll be redoing, uh, they'll be redoing some of the floors downstairs, um, and that will be uh, off limits to anybody that has feet. Uh, uh, or wheels, I guess. Um, but so that'll be off limits for about three days. So if you need something from the basement area, uh, do it before Saturday or after Tuesday. I can do math. I can do math. <clears throat> so just a heads up that's this Saturday, three days, the floors downstairs will be off limits. So just a heads up. Uh, and third, yeah, we'll have a meeting up here. Uh, well, that, uh, yeah. Uh, Thursday, uh, they're going to be in, in a 
dovetail off that. Thursday, if you are available, if you know anybody that's looking for something to do, uh, we're going to be moving some tables as well, trying to move some stuff out of there. Chuck, what time? Was there a time on that? Any particular time? Not really. Just if if you want to help move some stuff, if you got time, you get a hold of Chuck Elliot, and he can he can uh, <laughs> just call him any day, any time, day or night. Call Chuck Elliot if you got any questions. Uh, <laughs> any other announcements? Okay, one other announcement, um, and this is going to kind of lead on to, I'm going to kind of pull on some, I'm going to throw on some guilt here, I guess. No, maybe not guilt, inspiration, inspiration. So today we're going to talk about, uh, in, in Big Kid Church, uh, we're going to talk about uh our ability opposed to our willingness. There are two different things. And so uh, today I'm going to inspire you, uh, hopefully, that you have the ability to do anything that God calls you into. I have that without a doubt. I know that for sure. What it boils down to, ultimately, is our willingness to fall in line with God's call. That's pretty much everybody in this world in pretty much every situation. So what we're going to talk about, that's what we're going to talk about here in a little bit. So as part of the announcements, as part of uh, doing what we hear or doing what we say we believe, do it, as a part of living out our faith, this is just a, a minor example of how we can do that. This is a clipboard, a simple, uh, you know, everyday clipboard. But on this clipboard is a piece of paper, and this piece of paper is a simple, everyday piece of paper, nothing special about it. But what is special about this combination is that on this is a sign-up sheet for our children's church and nursery area ministry. This is more than just a normal, everyday clipboard. More than just an everyday, normal piece of paper. This is your opportunity to serve your church to serve the kingdom of God and to answer a call that we also often say, can I do that or I can't do that? The real question should be, will I do that? So if it is in your heart to do children's ministry within this church, um, I encourage you now to, to take this, pass it around, sign up if you're able to. Uh, we're looking for two people every week to take care of our youth, or to take care of our children and nursery ministries. So uh, please take the time to consider that, pray, pray about it, and put your Herbie Hancock on that piece of paper so we can take care of the kiddos of this church. Any other announcements? Okay. All right. As I mentioned earlier, I had a beautiful morning, a beautiful ride in. I was feeling quite peaceful this morning. The sun is shining through our beautiful stained glass windows here at Tyler Memorial. Uh, we are warm and cozy in here, blessed beyond belief to have a facility like this to come together to praise our God, to worship our Savior. And so today, let's do that. Let's take a big, deep breath. Mm, it's nice to breathe in in a warm room where the, the air doesn't burn your lungs. If we were outside right now, we have a blessing of this beautiful facility. So let's take that big, deep breath again. Breathe in the very will of God. Breathe in the very spirit that dwells among us today. Let's close our eyes and take another deep breath and go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we just thank you. And we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this opportunity to come to you, to spend time with you, to be intentional about our relationship with you. Lord, we know that you seek us constantly. We know that your eyes are always upon us. We know that your hands are always moving us and directing us. Lord, help us to not fight that will. Help us to not kick against the, the goad. Lord, help us to submit all that we are today as servants to the kingdom of God. Lord, help us to open our hearts to love and grace that we never thought possible, that we never even thought to be right, Lord. Open our minds to your possibilities. 
Lord, we just ask that today our, our worship, our, our time here together, be pleasing to your ears and healing to our hearts. It's in your holy name we pray that you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. through 11 says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord over oh, the joys of those who trust in the Lord who have no confidence in the proud or in those who worship idols or, O oh Lord my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. You take no delight in sacrifices or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Then I said, look, I have come, as it is written about me in the scriptures. I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out, as you, O Lord, well know. I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. Lord, don't, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. The word of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and, and give glory to God as we sing our opening hymn to God. Give the glory. <laughs>
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. While you're being seated, the youngsters can come forward for our... It's awesome. I love it. So we've been watching a lot of Star Wars lately, and I can I have, have Isaac and I have been having these discussions lately about uh, uh, you know certain aspects of the of the Star Wars series, and one of them was about Luke and the Force, right? So we talked about, um, and Isaac knows more than I do about this stuff. We talked about like the bat, like when he was when Luke was on Hoth in the Empire Strikes Back. And he used the force to get his lightsaber to free himself from the ice monster thing. Yeah, the wampa. And we had this discussion about, so did he already have the force then? Or what, did, did he get it after he got trained by Yoda? Was that later? Was it before? And I just, my mind exploded and he kept talking. And I just, I, I was shut down because I, I didn't know. But I, ultimately, the answer to that question is kind of the answer to... Uh, or kind of the subject of what we're going to talk about today. We, we were talking about when Luke received the Force, right? Or when he started using the Force. But the truth is, Luke had the Force the whole time, right? It was just a matter of, of how he used it, or his ability to use it, or his, his, his knowledge and wisdom. So that's kind of how we are. If you imagine the Force... Being like the Holy Spirit. So a lot of times we think we, we get the Holy Spirit here or there, or we get this or that, and different denominations, different churches have different beliefs on that. But ultimately, I believe that the, that the Holy Spirit of God, the force, if you will, is already inside you guys. Can you believe that? I don't know, maybe some of you guys can lift up a, a spaceship with the force like Luke does on... What's that, what's that planet called? Dagobah. What? Dagobah. Dagobah. Listen to these guys. That's, sure. I don't know if we can do that, but I do know that the Spirit of God is in you guys already. Whether you know it or not, whether you know how to use it or not, it is in you. Quit trying to, quit trying to Darth Vader me. <laughs> I see you down there. But that's what we have to realize, not just as young folks, some of us as adults, we need to start remembering that too, that we're not waiting for uh, anything in particular. We're not, we're not, uh, we don't earn God's love and God's grace in our lives. It dwells within us and we have to learn how to use it or appreciate and understand that we have it even, right? So that's what I want to encourage you guys. Don't wait till you're older. Don't wait till you think you know enough. Don't. Don't wait till you, till you think you're, you are qualified or good enough 
to start living into God's calling in your life. Because God's, God's power and God's calling is already inside of you. So I know when you hear that, sometimes it's scary. It calls us into new situations or, or things that we don't know if we're ready for. But I promise you, if God's calling you into it, he's, gonna, he's, got, he's got a plan for you. So trust the force, you know, young Padawans, and, uh, and trust God has a plan for you and that he's got power inside of you already to do those things that he's asking you to do. Sound good? Okay, can we go to the Lord in prayer? Let's do it. Lord gracious God, we just thank you for these young people. We thank you for the example that you give us in your son Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that we can use the Holy Spirit, that we can use the power that you have given us. Help us to recognize that it dwells within us already. And help us to utilize that, Lord. Let us be conduits of your love and grace in all that we do. Help these young folks go into this world and, and, and change this world for the better. And it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, kiddos. <laughs>
Sons went in the Marines for some boys without him. And one in rehab too. Because he's in rehab because he went drugs real bad. We pray for Scott's, both of Scott's sons. One of them is in the Marines and one of them is in uh, rehabilitation right now. Uh, both of them uh, fighting battles that many of us don't understand. Some of us do. Uh, continue to pray for Scott's. <coughs> Both of Scott's sons. Amy George. She's ill. Remember Miss Amy George? It seems like a lot of people are sick right now. Um, Miami Trace was closed Friday because they had so many students ill. So, uh, and we've had our youngest is coming off of it. So we're praying for all those who are ongoing. Chris is still sick. And so we're praying for everybody involved uh, with the epidemic. The epizootic. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I love the reaction. <laughs> heart monitor or is that a human being that just follows you around? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But everything okay? Doing all right? Feel, feeling good? Good. Okay. Well, we'll be praying for you for sure. And, and praise you that you're home and well. Anybody else? I want to uh, lift up uh, our our Tyler Church family and our upcoming leadership team and and the future of Tyler Memorial. Twenty twenty is uh, is looking interesting for a lot of reasons. You know we've talked about the the ongoing issues that that the Methodist Church has has been dealing with, and those will more than likely come to some sort of uh, of resolution, so to speak, uh, in the coming months. So come summertime, we'll, as a United Methodist Church, be looking very differently, probably. And that's okay. Things change. Things, things evolve. Things happen. Um, they happen from Jesus on and from before Jesus. Our understanding of our faith, our understanding of our religion, and, and yes, even the understanding of our, of our, of our tight-knit little denomination here of the United Methodists uh, has room to grow and evolve and change. Um, we pray that everything goes well in that transition, but we also pray for our, our immediate family here at Tyler Memorial. The, the upcoming 2020 season is looking also a little different, a little interesting for us as well. Um, and our leadership team is, is a reflection of that. We're changing some models, uh, streamlining a bit, and just want to give everybody a heads up on that. So that's why I especially encourage everybody to come to our leadership team meetings. Uh, we want you to be part of this. We want you to feel involved. We don't want anybody to feel left out. Uh, we are a family, and every voice should be heard. So prayers for us, uh, but also praises. I, I, I believe God's, uh, I believe this, and I'm going to continue to believe it, that God is moving, not just uh, here, but in southern Ohio, in our region, and, and in our churches. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what God's got in store for 2020 for Tyler Memorial. So praises and prayers both. Keep your church family in your prayers. We're going to be pulling, pulling the trigger on some cool new ministries some small group ideas and some other things like that that we hope to help feed your, your soul and to feed our church family. So, looking forward to that. Any other praises or concerns? I got a job. 
There it is. I was waiting for that. Scott got a job. Congratulations. Scott, let's give Scott a round of applause. Scott, uh, came over here to Chillicothe not even a month, what, a month ago, maybe? I've been in Chillicothe a uh, month and a half, a couple months. A month and a half. And I've been struggling and I'm still struggling over something. I went to Kedra Center Friday. Yeah. My kids was getting worse. Yeah. So Scott's dealing with some health issues, um, on top of some other issues, some economical issues and whatnot. Uh, Scott's been attending here with us for the last few weeks and, and uh, the last month or so. And uh, I want to lift him up especially. And uh, he's, uh, he's got a lot against him. It seems like the Lord's testing him an awful lot. So we want to keep Scott in our prayers for sure. Um, and, and in fact... Uh, here in just a minute when we go to the Lord in prayer um, if, if if you're willing and able to I'd like you to come forward and we're going to kind of lay hands and, and pray for Scott and his future um, did we have anybody else with a joy or concern before we do that no. okay if you are able to I want to go ahead and stand up and I know it's you're comfortable and it's warm and you just want to sit there but let's uh Let's honor God and let's honor our brother here by standing and coming forward. And if you're able to, just lay a hand on Scott. Uh, and if you're not able to, just put a hand on somebody that's close. that is here with us today. Uh, God is always willing to work where we are willing to be his workers. So let us uh, appreciate that today, appreciate that responsibility and that, uh, that opportunity today. So let's go ahead and close our eyes and bow our heads and, and focus our attention and our love and our energy on Scott as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord gracious God, we just thank you uh, for all the gifts in our lives. We thank you for those praises that we lifted up today. Lord, we... We ask that you heal and protect, comfort those who need it today. Lord, we thank you for all those folks uh, that, that their names were lifted. We thank you for the, their life. Lord, we especially lift up today, Scott. We ask that you can, can bless him in a real and powerful way today, Lord. You have been working in his life in the times that I have known him, that we have known him here at this church. I've got to see him grow in, in his faith in this short amount of time, his, his desire, Lord, to know you. Lord, he has been working hard, and you have rewarded him. Lord, he's still dealing with some struggles. Physically, Lord, his, his health is not well, and we ask, Lord, that you can, even, even though the body is weak, Lord, we know that the spirit is willing. So if you, if you're, if your will be done, Lord, and it be your will. Heal Scott's body. Heal Scott's body and heal his soul. And Lord, continue to bless and anoint him in the days to come. Thank you for the gifts that you've given him. Help him to recognize that all he has is a gift from you. Lord, we just thank you for his presence here with us. And we ask that we can be good stewards of your grace and love to him. Let's be good examples of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask that we can help him grow in his faith and become part of our family more and more each day. Lord, it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen.
I'm an, I'm an appreciator of the athletic ability of, of human beings. So I love to watch sports for that reason. And I'll see somebody do something, especially track and field. Lindsay will attest to this. I'm all the time like, like I don't watch, I mean, I do watch TV. But like a lot of things I like to watch are YouTube videos of like track races and like long distance runs where people are just giving their all. And it's just an, an impressive feat, you know, to watch these like the guy that just ran the marathon in under two hours. Like, do you understand how insane that is? I don't know, what, like if you've ever ran at all, to run a marathon under two hours is running like sub five minute miles for 26 miles. It's like four minute and 37 second miles for 26 miles. I don't know if you if you have any idea of how fast that is, but I can I cannot run that fast for 200 meters. <laughs> if that gives you any idea how fast that is, so I like to watch those kind of athletes, just the the best of the best. The Olympics are just awesome because it's the best of the best, and I always think, man, I wonder if I could can I do that? Man, there's no way I could do that. I can't do that. There's no way I could do that. But you know what I can do? I can run. <laughs> I can't run a four minute, 37 second mile, let alone 26 of them in a row. <clears throat> but I can run. Not fast, not very far. But to the best of my ability, I can run. I can run. So, so many times in our lives, when we are called into something, it starts as, as a, a vision of an example. We see an example of what's in our heart. This is, this is basic stuff. We see, let's say my passion is music. We see a band that we like up on stage, and we see that lead guitarist just wailing away, right? That's in my heart. Like, music speaks to me. I see that guy doing that. It's like, ah. Oh. I wonder if I can do that. So we, everything starts with an example. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yep. We see that athlete. We see that musician. We see that uh, politician. We see that Christian, even, right? Hopefully, we have some of us aspire to be like, like powerful Christians in, in, our, in our lives. So we see the example. But what happens is, after we see that example, we immediately begin to pour on the doubt, right? The... The self-wallowing, the, 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 the fear. I can't do that. There's no way I could ever do that. I can't be like that person. That person's good. <laughs> I could never be like that person. And so we don't even ever try. I could never be the best I could never go to the Olympics. I could never be the head of that organization. No one will ever call me asking me to come sing the national anthem. 
<laughs> you know, I would never, that would never happen. And so we turn it off. When all along, God's call was through that example, not to make you like that person or that person or better than that person, but to lead you into a life that God has called you into. Because you can do that. You can follow God's calling. Everyone can do that. It's amazing how quick we are to shut our own dreams and desires, our own faith calling. We shut it down like that. Man, we're quick to do it. And what's even worse, so, so like we do that to ourselves, right? Like when I, when I ask myself, whom I, I think a lot of myself, I appreciate myself quite a bit. I respect my decision. I respect my opinion. And even to myself, I say, no, no, I can't do that. I'm sorry. So how much more likely are we to say no to someone else? And yes, even to God. When we shut our own dreams down, when we, can, when we can close ourself down so quickly, how do we expect to ever open ourselves up to the will of God? This is one of the biggest problems in our faith life today. It has always been. You see, our spiritual life is a battle. Whether you think it's hippy-dippy, you know, magic stuff or whatever, there is a spiritual battle being waged within your heart, within this world, within every realm you can imagine. Wherever good is, evil is there as well. And it manifests in your life by the devil saying, you can't do that. Psst. <laughs> You're just watching that on TV, man. That ain't you. You'll never be that guy. Don't even, don't get off the couch. Sit right there. You can't run a four minute mile. Sit on the couch. That is the devil. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to run. I'm just saying that's my example. You should go out. I, I encourage you to. It's good. But God is calling you into something. God has a plan for all of us. That's, can everybody agree on that? God has a plan for your life. You wouldn't be here if God didn't have a plan. If you had no purpose, you would not be here. That, that makes sense, right? That's, doesn't that kind of make you feel good, though? You are an intentional creation of the creator of the universe. How cool is that? Now, how, how much more powerful do you feel? Did, you, did your chest just go like this a little bit? I'm an intentional creation. <laughs> I have a purpose. Yes, you do. You have a purpose. Take pride in that. Take responsibility in that. God is calling you into something. And you may not be able to be the best at that something, but you can do that something. Will you do that something? That's what's holding you back. Uh, 1 Corinthians. Where are we? Here? Our scripture today. 1 Corinthians. If you look at 1 Corinthians, it's... I love all of Paul's letters to the churches because they're always so encouraging. Uh, sometimes they're a little scolding, you know. Paul likes to make sure that churches are in line. But sometimes he's so encouraging to the church. And I want you to take these words today from Paul and, and put them in your heart. Uh, skip on down to, to four. I'm going to start there in four. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way. I'm going to say that again. For in him you have been enriched in every way. With all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly await for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, we have no excuse. 
You don't lack the spiritual gift to do what God is calling you into. You lack the physical uh, willingness. The flesh holds you back. The Spirit of God is in you. You are empowered. You are enriched by the Son of God. Who, who? I love this picture. Who takes your can't and turns it into can. You see that? Jesus taking that T that represents the cross, hauling it up that hill, dying for our sins on that cross. When you say, can I, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Oh, I could never do that. Why not? Because you can't do that because you do not let Jesus lead you into it. You're afraid. We all do. Don't, I'm not picking on you. I do it too. Our excuses have been removed. Our reasons to not to, as Mater says in Cars, our reasons to not to have been wiped away. The things that are holding you back from furthering the kingdom of God are in your mind. They are not in the way. Christ has removed all of our barriers. Christ has removed the chains. Christ has taken us and freed us from these bodies that hold us back because within our bodies, that is where those doubt, those shames, those chemical reactions of fear where they stem from. And when we listen to that, you'll recognize just how human we are if we can learn to listen to the very Word of God, the living Word of Jesus Christ that leads you into green pastures, not so that you can sit there and feast, but so that you can be with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Follow Him into wherever He's calling you. He's not worried about you getting fat and happy sitting in the same spot in that field. He just wants to be with you. And the way we are with Jesus is when we are in the will of God. Uh, D.S. Uh, Austin, Cal uh, I think I'd call him Calvin. I think I've known him long enough now. He's, we've known each other for several months. I think I can call my colleague Calvin. <laughs> The good Reverend Calvin Austin Jr., our district superintendent, has, has prayed over and over uh, and talked about over and over uh, this year, this 2020 season for our district. He, he repeatedly uh, reminds us, so it is written, thy will be done, not mine own. So this 2020 season, as we look into this year coming up for our church, for our individuals, for our community, for our, our connectional church even. As we look into this 2020, and I'm going to play on it, the 2020 vision. I want you to develop a 2020 vision for your life. Develop that crystal clear outlook and follow. Pursue the life that Christ is leading you into with reckless abandon. But first you have to know what that is. So I encourage everybody, in, in the coming days, in the coming weeks, in your coming life, take time to sit down and ask God where he's leading you. He loves to talk to you. God loves to talk to us. Like he's just, you know, you, you all, do you all, anybody have one of those relatives or a friend that they live alone and, uh, <laughs> and they don't ever see anybody very often? And so when you go over to visit, they, t they could talk for four or five hours straight. Yeah? That's kind of how God is these days with some of us. He's sitting there just waiting for you to come over. Sitting there just begging for you to come knock on his door. Sitting there just pleading even. Maybe even calling you. Sending you a telegram every once in a while. Come see me. I got something for you. Oh, that'll get us there, won't it? If you knew that God had something for you, that would make you a little more likely to go to him. Well, I'm promising you this. God's got something for you. Go see him. Go talk to him. See where he's leading you into this coming year. 
and have the faith and courage to say, okay, all right, God, here I am. I'm right here. I'm willing and able. I'm willing and able to pursue your call in my life. The ability's there, remember. It's our willingness to follow through that, that will stop us every time. I love this. I want you to remember this. In everything that you do, you know, all things are possible with God. Not us. We can't do it. So those times when you think, I want you to leave you with this hook. When you think, I can't, you dang right. You can. <laughs> you can. I can. Christ does. Christ did. So next time you, that God is calling you into something, maybe it's a phone call. Hey, do you mind helping out? Or, or hey, can you do this? Maybe it's a call in your own heart. You see somebody on the side of the road. Yeah, I should do that. But maybe it's a dream in your life that you've had for years. I'd love to sing, or I'd love to write, or I'd love to do this, but I could never do that. You're right, you couldn't, but Christ can. Trust that he's leading you into the paths of righteousness in all that you do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we just thank you for your love and your grace. Lord, we thank you for your calling. Lord, we, we thank you for the purpose that you put in each and every one of our lives. We are intentional creations of you. Each and every breath should remind us that you have a job for us to do. Lord, help us to understand how powerful we are. Lord, help us to understand just how enabled we are. Lord, help us to understand that it is not these earthen vessels that makes us strong because we are pressed in on every side, Lord, but it is the Spirit of God that dwells within us that keeps us from cracking and imploding on ourselves. Lord, help us to trust in that Spirit more and more. Let it lead us into the coming days in all that we do. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, let's uh, continue that, that, uh, that commitment in our hearts to God. As we sing our closing hymn, uh, and really, we I mean, make this a make this an offering to your God, to your Creator, to the to the One who is calling you into a life that you never thought possible. Make this your prayer to, to God today. Number five ninety three. Let's stand if you're able to and sing our closing hymn. Here I am, Lord.
intentional in your outreach, inspirational in your discipleship, unconditional in your love. Listen for God in your life. Just wait. Just wait for you to say, here I am, Lord. I'm ready to go. You open the door, and I will walk through it. He's working on you. He's been working on you for, for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. 90 years, I don't care. God's working on your life. I pray that you can open your hearts each and every day.